Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Anna and I'm a little bit spooky and today we are going through empties. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> I have got two, two baskets full of empties. Oh my god, what is wrong with me? <laughs> and why are so many of them Dr. Teal's products and so much of it purple? <laughs> Does anybody do that, like end up buying all their bath and body products in the same color accidentally? I do that with stuff that comes in purple packaging. I don't know why, I just end up liking the fragrance of stuff that's in purple packaging a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I have a lot of purple trash to dig through with you guys. So let's start with the big basket here and just work our way through because girl, I got a lot. I got a lot, I got too much. First thing on top here is a Dr. Teal sleep soak. I think I've talked about these enough. We know how I feel about them. I love them, <laughs> I love it. But yeah, the melatonin sleep soak is perfection. It helps my achy, stiff body at the end of the day, helps me relax and just get ready to go to bed. We have <laughs> two bottles of Dr. Teal's bubble bath. I have the sleep bath of melatonin and essential oils and then I have the soothe and sleep with lavender. Um, I don't think there's much difference between the two aside from a little bit of a scent difference. Well no, they actually kind of smell the same. <laughs> they basically have the same claims and everything. Just one has melatonin and essential oils and I think it's just melatonin and lavender and this one is just straight lavender. Both are pretty dang good. I buy whichever one is in stock at my local Walmart, Target, Walgreens, wherever it is I'm shopping. So yeah, I, I go through these like crazy because I love bubble baths. I'm just real, real into bath stuff, okay? And speaking of bath stuff, we have the sponge gel moonflower sponge. I used this up a little while ago and loved it so much. The scent, the scent is moonflower by the way. This is the Beyond Cleansing Body Wash Infused Buffer. Oh, it's so good. And I found a local small store about an hour from me. It's the oldest general store in Louisiana and they sell this. <laughs> so if I well, want to buy some more, I'm gonna go there because I wanna support a small local business as well as stock up on my favorite new bath body wash situation. I love the sponge that comes with this. It is so gentle yet so exfoliating. The fragrance of this Moonflower one is so good. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. And you can get quite a few uses out of it. Uh, I can't remember how many uses it says you can get. I feel like it was on here somewhere. It says like 14, but you can get more than 14. And it's just really lovely and it makes your skin feel so, so good. Let me finish up this basket in front of me here. We have a Dove Between Care, Care Between Washes. Volume and Fullness Dry Shampoo, again, another thing that I absolutely love. It's got purple shampoo on it, just disregard. Favorite, favorite dry shampoo. Leaves a white cast, but it's still damn good. It smells great. I like to use it at night before bed. Another dry shampoo here that we I went through is the Not Your Mother's Plump for Joy Body Building Dry Shampoo. Uh, this is in the orange mango scent. It is a nice scent. I don't think it's a great dry shampoo. It's... It really doesn't do a whole lot for me. Didn't care for it. Will not repurchase. Oh, and I have another Not Your Mother's Dry Shampoo here. I got a bit of a kick with this brand. Um, this one's the Beach Babe, Babe Texturizing Dry Shampoo in Toasted Coconut. Did not care for the scent as much as this one. And also, it didn't really do a whole lot for me. I don't feel like it gave much anything. It was just a little too lightweight, I guess you could say, for my dry shampoo preferences. I want industrial dry shampoo, and this is just more of a kind of a texture spray, but it still leaves a white cast, so it kind of sucks. I don't know. I just wasn't a fan of this one either. And while we're still on dry shampoos, I was kind of just trying to use up my older ones that I had. Next, we have this one. This is the Botifying Bamboo Fiberful Dry Shampoo Foam from OGX. I love, love, love this. The only reason I'm throwing it out, there's still some in it, but my nozzle is clogged and it doesn't come out anymore. Oh jeez, it's doing stuff at me. I feel like you're gonna explode. It's making noise. Yeah, I think my little nozzle is so clogged up though. But anyways, this is a fantastic little dry shampoo foam. If you can find this, I can't find it anywhere hardly. It's so hard to find, but it is so good. It is effective. It doesn't leave a cast in your hair. 
you basically put in your hair like a mousse when your hair is dry and work it in and it just gives you volume and lift and it just it makes your hair look so full and so amazing and it does have the perks of a dry shampoo as well it is a fantastic product and i need to order some more off amazon or somewhere because i love it that much it is so good and last dry shampoo is this little baby from igk this is the first class charcoal detox dry shampoo this is a lovely little dry shampoo this is just the trial size i think my sister-in-law gave me this i think that's where i got it from Anyways, um, I know it's kind of pricey. Actually, it's really pricey. IGK is pretty expensive, I believe. Anyways, it's really, really good. It is a great little dry shampoo if you want to spend the money on it. I thought it was really nice. Not a terrible white cast. Lovely scent. Effective. Good stuff. I use that little mini up like that, though. Okay, now that we are done with dry shampoo, let's move on to some more hair products. Okay, we have the Herbal Essences Bio Renew Coffee Fruit Volume Conditioner. This is one of the best volumizing shampoo and conditioners I think I've ever used on the market. The smell is, or the fragrance is so good. It does not smell like coffee. It smells just uh, sweet and yummy and like you want to eat it. It smells so dang good and it is effective. It was just a fantastic product. And guess what? Can't find it anywhere anymore. Cannot find it. I think I picked up, I have one more possibly hanging out that I found on clearance at Walmart but I have used the shampoo and the conditioner this is just the last of the conditioner but yeah it doesn't wear your hair down but it leaves your hair feeling conditioned and like you actually you know use conditioner but it doesn't feel heavy the volume is great it is so lightweight and just such a beautiful fragrance just I, I love this one so much and I'm probably gonna have to dig around on Amazon and see if I can find it because I really really like you coffee fruit and yeah I initially thought it was gonna smell like coffee when I picked it up I was like ooh coffee that's what that was the main reason I picked it up off the shelf is because I saw it said coffee on it and then I smelled it and it was such a beautiful smell <laughs> so yeah I hope I can find these again or find this again because I really really liked it a lot I think this is actually Emma, Emily Noel's favorite as well and she had a hard time finding it in store anymore I believe she gets it off Amazon now I'm having a, a hair day. I'm gonna have like a shitty hair day. I don't know. I'm just having a bit of an off day. I, was, I don't wanna talk about it. Anyway, <laughs> I also have the Not Your Mother's Blonde Moment Purple Treatment Shampoo for a brass, brass reducing, shine enhancing purple shampoo with rich violet pigments with violet rice extract. This is a lovely, lovely shampoo. This has a beautiful scent. Yeah, it says a pretty, well, not beautiful. It has a nice scent for a purple shampoo. They tend to smell not the best but this one was pretty nice it is decently effective it's not the strongest one on the market but it's a good one just for like every day and yeah I liked it I liked it quite a bit I think it's quite on par with the John Frieda one they're about the same as effectiveness levels go and yeah this was actually a, yeah, this was a pretty nice little product right here looks like a LSU <laughs> I would not be uh, opposed to repurchasing that one. And then next, as far as my purple shampoo conditioner obsession goes, this is the L'Oreal Paris Ever Pure Sulfate Free Color Care System. This is the purple shampoo and the purple conditioner. These smell really nice. They have hibiscus in them and they actually smell very like natural floral. Like they smell like flowers and in like fresh flowers and it, they have a beautiful scent. I think they are quite effective. They are very richly pigmented. Both the conditioner and the shampoo have a lot of pigment to them. Like usually the conditioners are very softly pigmented, but this one's actually like blue. It's an interesting tone that is in it and it works pretty well. These are far more, probably the most effective ones I've used from the drugstore. And I like them. Um, but the only downside I would say is that you will have purple all over your bathtub from these. They kind of, they don't stain, but they leave chunks. <laughs> like the conditioner will leave some chunks around. And um, that's about it. They are sulfate free. There's no harsh chemicals. I think they cleanse my hair really well. They did help tone. And yeah, uh, the only other downside would be that they're a little bit drying. These aren't quite as nourishing as I would want from a shampoo or conditioner. Whereas the Not Your Mother's and the John Frieda 
are a little bit more nourishing on the hair, but less effective as far as the toning side of things. So it's kind of a give or take there, but they're not bad. They're, I still would recommend these if you're blonde and wanting some, helping to reduce the brassiness in your hair. I buy these, I know my hair is predominantly like a uh, natural black, but the, uh, my, my blonde bits here are very prone to looking super brassy. So I use the purple shampoo to tone my front parts and I just use it all over my head because why not? It keeps my hair from getting too warm because my hair does tend to like to pull warm. Anyway, good products, would recommend. I would also say kind of incorporate maybe a moisturizing mask or something in there because especially if you have color treated blonde hair, your hair is gonna be a little dry. So I'd say, you know, just throw a little nourishing mask or a heavier conditioner in there as well to kind of keep things happy. Okay, next. <laughs> one, oh, we got one last hair product in here hiding. It's just a uh, Kristen S. Working Texture Spray Mini. I've talked about this a lot. I love these, or I love this product so much. It's a lovely texture spray, lovely scent, lovely product, all around good stuff. It's just one of sprays to give your hair a little bit of movement, body, texture, a little bit of volume, good stuff. Is this one more hair thing? Oh, I do have one more hair thing. One more purple shampoo and conditioner. This is from Matrix. This is the So Silver. It was just a sample size, so I don't know if I really could get the full feel of its effectiveness, but I found it to be quite nice. Um, it's pretty decently pigmented. I can't really smell anything from it, so I don't remember it having a distinct smell, but this uh, is to tone silver hair, neutralize yellow. I think it's a little bit more gently pigmented like the uh, than, say, the L'Oreal one, but this, this is not bad. My uh, sister-in-law, who is a hairdresser, gave me this right after she had initially put my skunk stripe in my hair and uh, yeah I just now got around to like actually trying it and it was it was not bad uh, I think I would need to use it more than just one sample packet to really get the good feel for it but I liked it all right I don't know it didn't impress me like enough to go out and buy it especially at the you know matrix price point I'm all about the good drugstore finds okay last thing in my little basket in front of me here we can put that one aside. So now we have a perfect pumpkin. Donna, I know you just had this in your empties too. <laughs> We're just now finishing up our fall soaps around here. I love this one so much. It truly is a perfect pumpkin scent. I love the, the bottle itself. So nice. This is just a great, great soap. I can't wait to get another bottle next year. And yeah, I, I love the Bath and Body Works soaps. They're, they are, they are that bitch. Man, they are really... Mm, they're good. They leave your hands feeling nourished and the scent actually lingers. You could smell it for quite some time on you. I love that. And yeah, this one has a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. It is, let me see, carved pumpkin, spooky cinnamon, and moon, moonlight vanilla. Very lovely, perfect scent for fall. Just, mm, it's, it's just that, that classic fall you know, scent there. Okay, now we're getting into a little bit of skincare. What do we got here? Three things. First is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cream for eyes. I almost used it up. It's just old, I need, it needed to go. But eh, it's not right. It didn't wow me enough to like want to use it every day or anything. It was just a, just kind of a basic hyaluronic acid uh, under eye cream, but it was, a you know, the gel formula. So I would recommend I think if you have oily skin, but your eyes are kind of, you have also like dry skin at the same time. So you have like kind of a flaky under eyes, but you're predominantly oily. Something like this might be more beneficial to you because it's that lightweight gel formula. But I didn't really notice any benefits or anything from this. And I used almost the whole thing. It was just an extra step that I didn't find that effective. I'm much more fond of my Outer Correct from Sunday Riley. Uh, next, we have a little sample of the Origins Ginseng Eye Refreshing Cream. I think I have an actual big thing of this, or maybe I just have like the regular face cream of this. Yeah, I have just the gel moisturizer of this as well. But this was pretty nice. I think, I don't know if I even realized that this was an eye cream. I probably use this all over my face. Uh, I've used uh, a couple of things from this range from Origins, the Ginseng range, and I thought they were great. I really do like this little range. I just forget about it. I feel like it's a good start your day type of product. And this was a nice little eye cream. So yeah, uh, if I come across this in like a gift set or something or at a nice price point on sale somewhere, I wouldn't be opposed to picking it up. Let's see here. Next thing is from Dermalogica. 
This was my first Dermalogica experience right here. This is the Hydro Mask Exfoliant. Okay, I've got a lot to say about this one. First, let's talk about the claims here. This is a hydrating and exfoliating mask. Smooths and renews for luminous, healthy looking skin. You apply it to your clean face, let it hang out for about two, three to five minutes, and then rinse thoroughly. You can use it twice a week, once or twice a week, and you also kind of have to work it into your skin before you, as you apply it. And um, yeah, <laughs> did I find it effective? Not really. I didn't think it did anything for my skin as far as smoothing or exfoliating. It just, it didn't really do anything. And uh, I don't know, I think it made you had sensitive skin. This might be a better product for you. This just didn't really do anything for me as far as a mask. It was just, I saw no real change or anything effective about it. It was just kind of there. And the second thing that I really want to shit on it about is the packaging. It is this, you're supposed to push this little bit in at the top here. And it's supposed to come, not uh, sink in like this. And it was like a little button you would kind of push and it would push the product out. Innovative, yes. Effective, no. What happens is this little thing quits coming back up as you use the product. And you end up having to shove your finger down in here to push product out and it gets stuck because it's a hole in the top. I don't know if mine was defective. It looks like the hole was already made there. And I, yeah, I just, I didn't like the delivery method of it and I didn't find it effective at all. That being said, I have used some Dermalogica products since this and have been highly impressed. So this was just a dud among the, amongst quite a few Dermalogica products that I've recently been sent to try and have enjoyed. Mostly the packaging and this delivery system was the biggest turnoff to it. But otherwise it was just kind of a meh product. But I do think if you maybe you're a little more sensitive skin, you might would enjoy it more. I don't know. I didn't feel like it really did anything for me. It felt a little too gentle, if that makes sense. Okay, now we got some makeup. I, I decluttered a little bit. I was kind of reorganizing in here. So I've got some stuff that I was decluttering. First thing on top here is a KVD inkwell liner, which dried up on me. I'm not happy about that because I never got to use it. It is a red eyeliner. I had gotten it on clearance. I think they may still have this. And I might would actually repurchase it because it was such a lovely product. I just, and I had a look planned out. I was gonna use this for, because I mean, how often do I reach for like this shade of red liner? Not that often, but I bought it just to have in my, you know, little stash to whip out. But yeah, it dried up way before I got the chance to use it and it is totally, totally dry up in here. But it was so opaque and so beautiful when I did like swatch it on my hand. I think I may have used it on my eye once just to see what it looked like and I really liked it. So I, I'm pretty sad about this drying up, but this is the shade Outlaw. It matches the lipstick Outlaw. <laughs> and it's just such a good, cool, cool product and it was pretty easy to use. I like the, uh, the applicator was nice and everything like that. It's very fine. You can get in there and do some nice detail with it, but it just it dried up. Now I need to repurchase it. Damn it, I really wanted to use that and I just kind of forgot about it. Okay, and we have a Wet n Wild Natural Finish Setting Spray. I tear through these pretty fast. So, yep, it's one of those. This is my favorite drugstore setting spray. We got another little eyeliner here. I think this was, this is super old. My friend had given me this like years ago and it's just a glitter with a little thing. And it's not dried up or anything, but I just feel like I've had it way too damn long. I want to say it was something to do with Milan, Mulan, and I don't know how long my friend had had it either. <laughs> but it's just one of those things that like you just keep shuffling around in your makeup collection and you never really just declutter, even though you don't use it. Like the glitter payoff and it's not enough to matter. And I have no idea what brand this is or where it's from. It's called All the Strength is the Shade. Okay, it was made uh, by Walgreens, apparently. So it must have been just a little Walgreens collection and probably the, I don't know, Cartoon Mulan made it came out, Mulan? I don't know. I don't know how old this is, but it's gotta go. It's too damn old and I didn't really use it anyway. <laughs> Got two NYX Jumbo Liners that I literally never reached for. I bought these back when like the NYX Jumbo Liners were the end all be all of makeup products and I picked up the shade Rust. 
and purple velvet. Literally never used these. Like, I had them forever. Beautiful shades. They still work, but I just, I never used them and I'm not probably ever gonna use them. So yeah, I'm not a big uh, stick eyeshadow person. That just really isn't my vibe. But these were really pretty. You know, they're just nice shades. And they're still just as creamy as when I bought them. But my gosh, I've had these for six years, maybe longer. I mean, back when everybody was buying the NYX Jumbo Pencils. So six, seven years ago. So yeah, they're just really old and they, they gotta go. <laughs> and again, I literally never touched them. I didn't even use them after when I first bought them. So we got a Falsies Lash Lift. This is one that was just kind of shoved in the drawer. Definitely expired. Been a long time since I bought this. I bought it back when it came out. So it's ready to be thrown away. But this was a lovely mascara. It's pretty nice. I would recommend you check it out if you like nice volumizing lifting curl mascaras. This one does give you some really good lift to your lashes. And it's it's a good one. It's a good one. So wait, Maybelline knows how to make a good mascara. And this was no exception. So yeah, it's just old. And it's time to go. It is well past its three month mark. It's just been hiding in my drawer here. Um, what else we got here? I'm just gonna grab a little handful. This is a lip liner. It's one of the faux. No, this is an eyeliner from NYX. It's one of the faux blacks. This is in the shade Oxblood, which is my favorite fucking shade. Favorite lip eyeliner here. It is a deep Oxblood red. However, mine has fully dried out and I cannot get any color payoff off of it. And you can tell I used it a lot. It is sharpened down quite a bit, but it dried out. But uh, the formula on this was fantastic. So, so long wearing, so good. So beautiful in the inner rim, the, you know, the ox blood color, just a nice dark burgundy. It's not too dissimilar from Pillow Talk liner from Charlotte Tilbury. This would be a good drugstore dupe if this is still something that can be purchased. I don't know if these are still available on the market. If they are, I will link them below because these are really, really good. Beautiful shades, really beautiful shades. Oh, and here's another NYX eyeliner. This one's super old. I bought this back when our, our Ulta first opened, so that is definitely like seven years old. It's just a brown eyeliner it's, and it's really old, so it's gotta go. A Wet n Wild brow pencil. This is the ultimate brow retractable brow pencil. I have decolored this one because it's used up. It's down to the nubbin, but I really like this brow pencil quite a bit. And it is in the shade Dark Brown, which is a perfect shade match for me. Good product, I do recommend from the drugstore. This is not a fine tip one. This is one of the more like angular, kind of diamond shape tipped ones, which I don't mind. I mean, you can't get that much precision in it, but for filling in like bulk, they're pretty dang good. I would use it in conjunction with a fine tip one or one of those little uh, brow pins just to get the little hair like strokes at the front and use this on the rest of my brow. All right, another brow product. This is the Instant Lift Brow Pencil from e.l.f. I talked about how much I love these. This is one I've used up. I use the deepest shade and yeah, great product. Highly recommend and they're like $2. Next is the L'Oreal Flash Cat Liquid Liner. This is probably one of the best drugstore Liquid liners you will find on the market. It is fantastic. It is high-end good. Like it's up there with like the best of the best of high-end. It is super long wearing, super easy to use. But yeah, this is the, the L'Oreal Infallible Flash Cat Eye. And it comes with like a little stencil thing. I threw that away because it was just bothering me sticking out on the side and I never used it. But it is a, oh dear. <laughs> oh no, it's all broken. Okay, well, never mind. I was going to show you, it is a brush, here we go. It's a nice little fine brush tip. It is very black and it is pretty matte. It's just so incredibly long wearing. I'm uh, getting rid of it because mine's pretty old and the brush has kind of gotten all wonky, but it is a great, great eyeliner and definitely something that I will repurchase in the future. I just got a lot of random liquid liners I'm trying to get through right now. Yeah, a little chapstick. This is from a bank. They gave us chapstick and it tastes really gross. That's the only reason. It's, just, it's really nasty tasting. Like it tastes like bubble gum and I bleh. And I have an Essie Strong Start base coat. I love this base coat so much. I really like the Essie Strong Start base coat and the gel setter top coat so much. My manicures last so long since I started using those. A good four days, five days, maybe a week if I'm lucky. Like, and I'm hard on my nails. I chip my nails left and right. I don't have strong fortified nails that 
can survive everything. I don't have simply no logical nails by any means. I have pretty shitty ones. And uh, yeah, when I use this, my nails, my manicures last really well. Between this and the gel setter top coat, you cannot go wrong. You don't have to use an, S an SE polish with it. You can use a sinful wood, uh, Sally Henson, whatever brand you like. This, But these, these are good stuff. Why do I get congested when I start talking? That's so annoying. Okay, and I have two little perfumes that I used up, some little perfume samples. I get these every time they're available at Sephora to get little perfume samples. I go for it because I love little perfume samples. I like to try new ones. So we have Midnight Fleur from Nest. They get you out of it. Yeah, I like Midnight Fleur a lot. It is very, very floral, kind of mature. There's a hint of vanilla floral in there, a touch of musk maybe. This is quite a, a, it's a pretty mature smelling fragrance if you know what I mean. It's got a little bit of that grandma smell to it and I love that. So I really, really liked this one quite a bit and would not be mad at having the full size of it. So I need to write that down that that was a fragrance I liked. Next we have Tom Ford Soleil Blanc. Soleil Blanc. I'm gonna have to spray it on the other side if I can get it out to tell you anything about it. Oh, come on, there's like a teensy bit in there. Come on. This one also smells quite mature and yeah. There's something about this one I didn't like. It has a, I don't know. I, I don't, I can't pinpoint the fragrance notes that are in this one. So I'll put them on the screen, but I'm not a fan. Yeah, this one just, this one smells mature in a way that I don't like. It smells a little too, I mean, it's not bad. It just smells a little bit like, I don't know, Tarte or uh, sunscreen-esque. It's just not for me. But I guess me it's, it's called Soleil so it might have like notes of sunscreen in it. It does smell sunny and summery, but also kind of oppressive in the same way. Like it makes me think of like a sourness or something. I don't know. It, it does smell quite mature. So yeah, this one's not going to be a favorite for me. Not one I would be willing to purchase. But the next one, I think I would I would quite like a full size of it. It is that sweet musk smell that I like. All right. And lastly, I just have some brushes here that I'm decluttering because they're super old. Shitty little angle liner brush from BH Cosmetics. It's... It's time is it's it's done. It's fried. It's frayed. It's fried and frayed. Um, we got <laughs> the little brush from the Naked Two palette, I believe. It's either from this might be from uh, Naked Three. Well, either one. It's it's time to go. It's falling apart. I don't need it. I used to use this ages ago for just carving out my brows, but it's just not really a great brush, and yet yeah, it's also broken. So it's gonna go ahead and get decluttered. And then I have a little flat brush from Wet n Wild. And this is actually a great little brush and I used, I've used it quite a bit. 99 cents, good little brush. The only reason I'm really getting rid of it is because it's stained and it's just dirty and it just, it looks so bad. And I don't want to like pull it out in videos because it just looks so gross. But I like their brush style. I think they're really nice. I like that they have the little finger divot here. Uh, around the ferrule just gets kind of nasty looking and you can't really get it clean. And yeah, my brush tip, or the, the brush hairs on this one are just so stained. But these are great little brushes for like packing on shadow, carving out your brow, anything like that. These were really good. And they're 99 cents. And also from Wet n Wild, same issue with this one. It's just the ferrule has gotten so nasty looking. The paint's coming off. But I mean, these have been washed so many times. I've had these since these brushes came out and they've been on the market about a good four years at this point probably. And yeah, the brush brushes themselves are great. And for, uh, I think that one was like 99 cents. This one may be like a dollar, two dollars or something. They're so soft. They're so lovely and they're really good. And at that price point, I don't care about throwing them away, but this was just the angled contour brush. This is a great contour brush, especially if you didn't want a ton of pigmentation. It would pick up just the lightest amount of product and it was just so easy to apply, perfect shape, perfect like width, great, great little brush. So I would not actually mind picking up some more of these just because the price point is so good and if something went wrong with them, I don't mind throwing them away. And these were really, really nice. And I do, again, like the little divot on here for your finger, your thumb, whatever. Um, these held up really well. Like, I mean, this ferrule is on there still so good. I can't tell you how many times these brushes have been washed. 
from Wet n Wild and they have held up beautifully. And the only thing that really looks worse for wear is some staining on the one and just the paint on the ferrule coming off and that's from washing it frequently. Uh, next I'm getting rid of this little guy from e.l.f. I just never use it. It's just a little really flat skinny kind of shader brush. This is the eyeshadow C brush. I had a little phase using this but I just find it a little too thin to really get in there and do anything with. I don't know. I just didn't really like it that much. And I, I like the e.l.f. professional brushes pretty well. Some of them are fantastic. But this was just not one that I reached for. And again, they're like 99 cents. So I feel like I can go ahead and let it go because I don't need it and I don't use it. And the little fine tip liner brush from BH Cosmetics. This one is so damn fine and tiny. I used it quite a bit. I just find these too hard to maintain and keep clean or too clean without them getting totally frayed and unusable. But this one, I think uh, it's seen better days. It's time to go. And then lastly is a Real Techniques. Oh, it's rubbed off. This is the foundation brush, like the original foundation brush from Real Techniques. Had it since it launched. Uh, it was the first thing I ever bought at our Ulta when it opened. Uh, loved, loved, loved this product for, or this brush for a long time. And uh, the brush itself is still in fantastic condition. The only reason I'm getting rid of it is because this little rubber end here a, it's hard to store. Like, it can set up on its own, but it doesn't want to sit into a canister or anything or like a, a cup because it flares out, which is a little bit annoying. I don't know if they still make them like that. And uh, also, this little rubber bit is like sticky feeling. Like, it feels gross, and I don't like that. It, has, it feels like there's like a film on it, and I've washed it. Yeah, it's just, it's not coming off. And despite that, I will say these are great, great brushes. They will last you forever. I've had this brush for seven years. And that is the only thing that I have encountered to be a problem with it. And that's after seven years of having the brush. I believe Emily Noel actually mentioned the same thing in one of her videos the other day. And I was like, oh my God, mine did it too. They got sticky on the end. So I think that's just the uh, rubber breaking down. You know how rubber gets sticky when it's old? Sometimes it kind of gets yucky. So yeah, uh, that's the only reason I'm getting rid of it. Otherwise, the Real Technique brushes, Real Techniques brushes are freaking phenomenal. Okay, and last thing, and I'll let you go. This is a nose hair trimmer, face trimmer little guy. You know, it's one of these that you put the batteries in, you turn it on and it buzzes and you can trim things. I buy these. I use them to trim my nose hairs because I got some long nose hairs. I'm not afraid to admit it. I have a forest in there and they, they grow quite long and I gotta groom them. <laughs> and so I keep one of these on hand to do that with but this one just died for some reason. It totally broke and I can't get it apart to change the battery and I think the battery is just like has somehow melded in there. I don't know. It broke. It's time to go. This was like a a no brand one that you see on like an end cap at Walmart. Okay, <laughs> that's all my empties. We had a lot to go through today. I know, and I feel like I just did an empties. Girl, I got so, <laughs> I, I I've been trying to be, like pan product products, basically use up products. I've been really kind of on that kick of using things up and getting rid of them so I can incorporate new products in my life and just not have so many open things at one time out on the counter because that is getting where it bothers me now. So it was just, it, it was time to uh, use up some stuff and get rid of it. And yeah, that is all for today. Also, if you like this makeup look I am wearing, it is using the Pat McGrath Bronze Seduction Palette and it is on my Instagram. I did an IG video showing how I did this look just hanging out with me. I called it makeup therapy because I needed, I needed some makeup therapy today. <laughs> I needed some makeup therapy of just sitting quietly, playing in eyeshadow and just listening to a video. It was, it's, this, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty, there's some rough stuff going on. So anyway, uh, that's all for today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye now.